junior conductors, I'm Conductor Carl, and welcome aboard the Storytime Express. Well, I'm headed by Mia's school. Yeah, Mia's class is gonna go on a field trip to Farmer Faith's farm. The kids are going to learn about taking care of plants so they can grow big and tall. Have you ever been to a farm? It's really interesting. You know what? Since you dropped by for a visit, why don't you join the class for a trip? <laughs> I'm sure Mr. Rios won't mind. Well, if you're ready for a fun field trip at the train station, say choo-choo. <laughs> Okay, class, it's important that we are all on our best behavior. Can you promise to adhere to everything your teacher says? Adhere means to obey and do exactly what we say. Yes, Mr. Rios. Oh, I can't wait to go to the farm. <laughs> Wonderful. Conductor Carl will be here soon with his train. Can we all wait calmly in line? We will. <laughs> Junior conductors, are you coming to the farm with us? <gasps> what do you think we'll get to do there? <gasps> oh, I hope we get to ride on top of a cow just like a cowboy rides on top of a horse. <laughs> Everyone say, yee <laughs> It's gonna be so much fun! <laughs> Let's go! Junior conductors, this is Farmer Faith. She owns this farm. Can you tell us all about your farm? Oh, I'd love to. Welcome to my farm. This is my cornfield. Can you guess what I grow here? <gasps> what do you think she grows in a cornfield? Hmm. Do you think she grows pineapples? Sunflowers? What do you think? Right, she grows corn. Yeah, that's what I grow here. It takes a lot of work to grow tall stalks of corn. Ooh, you know, we could help junior conductors. Let's use all of our energy to run through the corn and pick as many ears of corn as we can. Stand up and run in place. Oh, wait, Mia! No! Oh, oh, oh. oh, no! Mia, the junior conductors! No, let's not run through the cornfield! Wait a minute. Why did you stop running? Oh, Mia, I like that you want to, you know, use your energy to help me and everything, but, but if you run through my cornfield, then, then you'll probably break my plants. Oh, no. Junior conductors, that sounds like it would be helpful to Farmer Faith. You're right, Junior Conductors. That wouldn't help her grow her tall corn. We should control our energy by telling our bodies to be careful. But we can still help, right? Sure! All the kids can help walk slowly with me through the field. I'll need your help picking the corn that has grown. Okay, we can do that. Show Farmer Faith your strong muscles, Junior Conductors. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, that will be perfect. <laughs> junior Conductors, while they help Farmer Faith, let's visit the music store and learn today's big point. Hi, Junior Conductors. Welcome to the music store. Let's sing today's big point together. Are you ready? Put your hand up to your ear. Use your power to help. Great job! Let's sing that one more time. Put your hand up to your ear. Use your power to help. Awesome! See you later! Uh.
This is my flower garden, Junior Conductors. What's your favorite color to find on a flower? Oh, mine's pink. I love pink. Oh, that's a good choice. <laughs> that's a great choice. I like sunflowers because they remind me of sunshine. Ooh, yeah, you know, all flowers need lots of sunshine to grow. Oh, Junior Conductors, we can help Farmer Faith's flowers grow by giving them super sunshine. What if we use... What if we use the giant magnifying glass to make the sun extra powerful? Does that plant look like it's growing? Oh, it doesn't. I think the extra powerful sun hurt the sunflower. Mia, if the sunlight is too strong, then it can hurt the plants. Plants need gentle sunlight. That's how we use the sun's power to help. Mr. Rios is right. You know the other thing that flowers need is water. Flowers are really thirsty. The junior conductors and I can help. What if we... What if we turn on a giant hose so that it fills the whole garden with water? Yeah, let's pretend to open up the faucet and let the water splash out. Too much water can hurt the plants. Yep, they don't need to be flooded with water. Just a gentle stream works just fine. I'm terrible at helping. I just mess everything up. No, don't say that. I love that you want to help. Farmer Faith is right. Mia, just like Farmer Faith grows fruit and flowers on her farm, the Holy Spirit produces good fruit inside of us. The fruit of the Spirit, right? That's right. Mm. One of the things he grows in us is gentleness. You know, that's when you use your power to help people. Being gentle means that you don't hurt them with your words or with what you do. Listen to this verse from the Bible, Philippians 4, 5. Let everyone know how gentle you are. Jesus' followers are gentle with others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's using the power that Jesus gives us to help. Oh, I hope I can find some way to help today. Hmm, oh, maybe I should hear the big point again. Yeah! Hi, Junior Conductors. Welcome to the music store. Let's sing today's big point together. Are you ready? Put your hand up to your ear. your power to help. Great job! Let's sing that one more time. Put your hand up to your ear. Use your power to help. Awesome! See you later! Junior Conductors, our big point says, use your power to help. Do you like to choose what you wear to preschool or to church? Do you like to choose what games you play? It's fun to choose, but we're learning about someone today who did not get to choose things for himself. His name was Onesimus. He was a slave a long time ago, and that means he worked for someone else and had to do everything that that person said to do. One day, Onesimus decided to run away. Let's stand up and pretend to sneak away while no one's looking. Sneak, sneak, sneak. Now, run in place as fast as you can. Oh, good. You can sit on your pockets. Onesimus could get in a lot of trouble for running away. On his journey, Onesimus met Paul. Paul got put in jail for teaching others about Jesus. While there, he helped Onesimus become Jesus' friend and taught him how to make wise choices. 
a day came when Paul had to decide what to do with his new friend. He could help him run away, or he could give him to the soldiers. Let's scratch our head like we're thinking hard about what to do. Paul wanted to use his power to help. He decided to write a letter to the person Onesimus used to work for. His name was Philemon. Paul asked Philemon to take Onesimus back and not be angry with him. He said Philemon should treat Onesimus like a brother. And that was surprising because most people did not treat workers like Onesimus with kindness. Paul wanted Philemon to use his power to be gentle and forgive Onesimus. Philemon had a big choice to make. He could be mean and punish Onesimus, or he could listen to Paul. I think that Philemon listened to Paul and used gentleness because Philemon was a Christian who followed Jesus. Let's pretend to hug a friend. Very good. We can choose to be gentle and helpful to others, or we can be rough with our words and actions. What do you think Jesus wants us to do? He wants us to be gentle and helpful. Thankfully, we have the Holy Spirit's help. He grows good things on the inside of us, like gentleness, so we can make the wise choice. Instead of using our power to make ourselves feel important, we can follow our big point. Use your power to help. Mia, have you had fun visiting the farm today? Yeah, kind of. I, well, I thought you'd be having a blast. Well, I mean, I love the farm, but I keep making so many mistakes and I want to help, but I keep making a mess. Oh, that sounds like you might be having trouble being gentle. <laughs> you know, sometimes I have to remind myself to be gentle with my words. Hmm, really? Well, <laughs> sure. Sometimes, well, sometimes I get angry when something doesn't go my way. What? You, you never get angry, Conductor Carl. <laughs> I do, but instead hmm. of using my anger to hurt someone, I remember that the Holy Spirit helps to make me gentle. Well, what do you do? Well, that's when I I choose to use my words to help things get better. Hmm. Sometimes I still have to tell people things that they don't like to hear, but but I do it in a way that helps them. Hmm. Well, do you think the Holy Spirit can help me to be gentle? I think he can. <laughs> Let's practice using our power to help by feeding Farmer Bates' <gasps> cow. Now, yeah. would it be gentle to drop a big pile of hay on top of her? Hmm. Hmm. Would it help to give her a whole bunch of hay? <coughs> You're right. <laughs> that would not be gentle. What if we gave her just a little bit of hay? That would be gentle. Mia, you used your power to help Farmer Faith. I was gentle. <laughs> you were. And I think you could become a really good farmer. <laughs> you know, thanks, Conductor Carl. Can, can we find something else to do to help Farmer Faith? <laughs> I think we should do it. Let's go. Hi, Junior Conductors. Welcome to the music store. Let's sing today's big point together. Are you ready? Put your hand up to your ear. Use your power to help. Great job. Let's sing that one more time. Put your hand up to your ear. Use your power to help. Awesome. See you later. Mia's class had a fun trip to the farm. It can be easy to use your power to hurt someone or make a mess, 
but God helps us to choose gentleness. And that means we use our words and our hands to help people. We build people up and don't tear them down and make them feel awful. Being gentle means reminding people that God loves them and wants to help them. You can tell your family all about gentleness when you do this week's big do. <laughs> all right, this is fun. Get a balloon and blow it up with your family. See how big you can blow up the balloon without making it pop. So use your breath to make the balloon into a fun toy, but be gentle.